everyone. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesday, episode 13. So tonight I wanted to start by letting you know that I have just published my new blog post over the weekend, the one that I've been mentioning in the last few episodes. And this post is about what I call spiritual processing. It's a three-step kind of guide to this work of spiritual processing that I've been doing myself and in reflection of working with a coaching client, I realized that I could boil this down into steps that I could share that would help other people process. And one of the things about spiritual processing, oh, let me mention, it's on my website, which is paulataylorenergy.com. It's also up on the medium.com website. So one of the things about spiritual processing that came as a big insight to me is the idea that we have to physically release things from our energetic field, from our body, in order to fully release them. So we can work through something mentally and emotionally, but we have to release it physically or it ends up kind of stuck in the energetic field or some part of the body and then we have to come back and work on it later. So this is some work that I've really been doing in my own life and it led me to tonight's topic, which is balance. Tonight we're going to talk about balance. So there's a lot of different ways we could talk about balance. You know, there's work-life balance, there's social life balance, there's all sorts of aspects of balance. And just for the sake of time, I wanted to keep it fairly broad. We may go into more specific aspects of balance as we progress down the weeks here. But tonight I wanted to talk about basically mind-body-spirit balance, or what I would call the physical body, the mental body, the emotional body, and then the spiritual body. So essentially, energy relates to all of these different bodies. Sometimes in energy work, we'll call it, we'll say this is in the mental body or the emotional body. And so when your energy is blocked in any one area of your life, then it affects all areas of your life. So if you are functioning at a super high level, let's say spiritually, but you've got some emotional blocks, then that's still going to affect your energy. So your emotional body has energy as well as your physical, mental, and spiritual bodies. So balance is all about free-flowing energy in all aspects of the body. That's what we're, that's our admirable goal, of course, that we're always working toward. And if you're out of balance in one area, you may not notice it without really paying attention because they do all affect each other. So I'm going to go into some personal examples and hopefully this will kind of help you see how all of these different aspects of being um, tied together and give you an overall sense of balance. So I'm going to start with the spiritual because that's my favorite. I feel like I've, I've been spiritual for a long time. I've been interested in spirituality um, since I was about 16. I've always been interested in kind of why, how things worked and why, and I've been interested in the psychology of things as well. I have a degree in psychology, but, but spirituality is something that comes easily to me. It seems natural to me. I have a strong intuitive connection. I've been doing this work for a really long time. And so that's an area of my life that, that is going really well that I don't have. I, of course I focus on it. Maybe that's why it is going so well. But that's an area of my life that comes fairly easily to me. So then emotional health has come to me with the dedication of my spiritual practice and then a lot of personal growth and development work. I went to therapy when I was 19 and did that for several years. And, and in my 20s and early 30s, I really worked a lot about kind of resolving some emotional issues. And everybody's got emotional issues. You know, you might have been raised in the most perfect family or had the most perfect life. But there's always energetic issues that get stuck in our emotional body. So that's something that I've been working on kind of in the middle part of my life. So for me, a big part of my emotional health and my emotional balance came from figuring out that I was an empath, that I feel other people's emotions, and then learning how to function in that because it can definitely be extremely overwhelming for a lot of my life. People would just say, oh, you're too sensitive. I had a lot of feelings when I was growing up that I didn't really understand that now I can look back and recognize as 
the feelings of adults I was picking up around me that I didn't understand. I didn't have the cognitive, emotional sort of intelligence to understand these complex emotions that adults had when I was seven or eight years old. So I had a lot of kind of angst growing up. I didn't really know why I had all these feelings. I knew I had a ton of feelings. I was, it took me getting into spiritual practice to really get my emotional stuff kind of resolved. And of course, it's a work in progress. I've done a lot of work on um, codependence, and I think that's kind of a lifelong journey. Uh, for me personally, I, I sort of struggle with people pleasing and making sure that I'm being assertive and asking for what I want and not kind of going into a passive aggressive kind of behavior. So that's kind of where I'm at with emotional help. So mentally, I love to think, I love to engage mentally. It's something that I've always really enjoy just like the spirituality, but I tend to overthink and that can evolve into worry. And of course that hooks back into the emotional. So you can see how kind of all this stuff is related. So my mental work now is, um, is strongly connected to my emotional work. It's the work of unlearning some thoughts that, that I developed as I, you know, as a child or in puberty or, or even later in life, some core beliefs, some thoughts that I have that I no longer find useful that I'd like to let go of. And that's difficult work because that stuff is really deeply rooted. And again, it's mental work, but it's also emotional work and it's spiritual work. So again, all this stuff sort of, it, it integrates. And then Physically, this is this is my Achilles heel. This is what we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. And this is what we're going to focus on in our meditation because so many of our meditations have been more mental, emotional, spiritual. So we're going to kind of get into the body tonight. And I wanted to talk a little bit about sort of what I've gone through physically. And again, just to show you that balance is really important. So you can't ignore one aspect of your being and focus on others. You can, I mean, for a while you can make a, something a focus, but, but things will move around and sort of they connect so much that, that really it's ideal to pay attention to all aspects of ourselves. So physically, um, I never liked having body. If you've read my book, I, I come right out and say that it's, I find the physical world very dense. It's easy for me to kind of escape into a spiritual realm and, it, everything happens so much faster up there. Like if I'm communicating with someone, if I'd like to call someone into my, my presence that who's passed on, you know, I just think about them and, and they're there. If they're coming, they don't, it's not like I'm summoning people, but everything happens very quickly in the spiritual realm. Time is different. And in this physical plane, to me, it's always, it's a much denser, it takes longer to manifest things. And I'm, I've never been a super patient person. Everyone in my family can attest to that. So that's maybe partly why the physicality has been sort of difficult for me. Right now, I'm working on my body. I'm working on my relationship with my body. And I've always been a very active person physically. But what I'm realizing more and more, especially recently, is that I was physically active out of shame and fear because I really hated my body. I didn't want to be in a body and it was more about exerting my will over my body than celebrating love of my body. And um, that's been a really strong insight. It's been kind of a revelation for me that, that incrementally, this is how this work kind of goes. You have little insights and then kind of one day your brain explodes and you're like, oh, I see how this has been affecting a lot of other aspects of my life. Some of the ways this manifests, because it does connect with the mental and the emotional, is that I am overly hard on myself. I expect to attain perfection. And I sort of channel all of my self-loathing for anything, any other part of my body, in of, of my life into my body. So anything that goes wrong, I sort of start focusing on my body. Oh, you're not doing what I want. Oh, you're getting weight, whatever it is. And I think that's really common for women. I think that a little bit of that is a product of just the environment that we're raised in as women and this obsession that our Western society has with how we look and, and, um, you know, how fit we are, let's say. But I've been working at a deeper level than that recently. And what I'm realizing is that I've been releasing a lot of stored tra traumas through this work of spiritual processing that I talk about in my latest blog. And it helped me see that spiritual work is not complete without addressing the body. 
So if we've got traumas, if we've got energetic stagnation stored in the body, then that's holding us back physic um, spiritually as well, not just physically. So I'm having, I say this every week, I'm having words. Words are hard. And my friend always says, words are hard. So words are hard for me tonight. That's okay. We'll get through this. So basically, you can hide issues in any part of your being. So what I'm realizing, and let me explain this again, kind of using myself as an example. So I've been sort of avoiding the physical or just thinking of it as just physical. And what I'm realizing now is that there are there are some areas in the physical that I need to address spiritually because I haven't been looking at them and I haven't been connecting the dots between how how balance is important, how related everything is. I am working on learning to love my body and learning to move it in a way that it wants to be moved, that it feels good, not in a way that I'm like, you're going to do this. I've been a taskmaster. And I think, you know, if I'm talking to myself that way physically, I'm also talking to myself that way mentally and emotionally. You know, if I'm being this hard on my body, then I'm being this hard on my whole being. And every week I come in here and I tell you, you know, this is a process. Be gentle with yourself. Be loving. That's what this whole journey is about, is bringing more love into our field, into our life. And it goes for all aspects of ourselves. So I'm using myself as an example here just to kind of reflect to you, you know, your landscape of this might look totally different. And I wanted to say a brief word about coaching here because this is something that I would work on with a coaching client, if somebody came to me and they said, you know, I feel like I'm out of balance or something's not quite right, we might take an inventory, kind of like I just did, where we go through mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, and, and identify what's working on these levels, what's not working, what am I calling for in certain areas of my life that would help me achieve more balance, because balance is what brings peace. And balance is that neutral mind that we, that we access when we're meditating that allows us to expand, that allows us to invite divine flow into our lives and get in a state of ease and a state of flow rather than a state of struggle. I had kind of a fight with myself today about this whole, maybe that's why I'm having a hard time with words today. Um, these topics come to me intuitively and I try to just flow into what comes in terms of sharing this information and doing a meditation. And today I got in what uh, my sisters and I call an OCD loop. I was like getting my notes ready and I, I had this idea of what I was, I really wanted to do for the meditation. And then it just didn't feel right. So finally I had to just kind of throw everything away and get into meditation and do some chant and open myself up to what came. I had mentioned, if you looked on social media, I mentioned something about chakra balancing. I'm not going to go into chakras tonight. When I started trying to organize that, I realized there's so much information there that to really do any justice to talking about the chakras and really working with them, we'd have to do one at a time. And that's something I'm completely willing to do. So if you're interested in like a chakra series, there's seven major chakras and we could do like a week on each chakra and I could talk about each one and what they the color they relate to, and we could really delve into that. But the intuitive information I received for tonight was that that was not it. So, because then at first I was like, oh, we're going to do all seven. Oh, we'll just do three. No, we're not going to do any. We are going to visit each of the major chakra centers in the body. You can actually see every week I sit in front of this beautiful uh, wall hanging. And these are the, this is the symbol for each chakra and the color for each chakra. So we're going to go through those centers in our body, but instead of talking about what the chakras are and, and what they're affiliated with and all that stuff, I'm going to do some intuitive work about checking in with ourselves on the different levels of being physical, emotional, mental, and bringing some affirmations in. And I really want us to get into the body tonight We've, really, we've been doing a lot of that, and of course, this is my favorite, so that's probably why we've been doing a lot of work where we sort of travel off and we go to our sanctuary, and that's extremely important, and it's very supportive of all these other types of practices, but for tonight, because of balance, we're going to stay in the physical body and really scan through it, really get ourselves grounded, and send some love to our physical body, because it takes a lot of abuse, you know, we, most of us have 
maybe not the perfect diet or maybe not the perfect exercise plan. You know, they say treat your body like a temple, but it's really difficult to do that. And especially with this year, everything's changed. I just saw some friends for the first time in six weeks, a couple um, of days ago in a socially distanced way. And we were talking about, they were saying, oh, I haven't gone to the gym in six months. You know, things have really been flipped on their head for us. So I want us to check in with our bodies, physical bodies, emotional, uh, mental, and spiritual. But we're going to do it all within the body. We're going to stay really nice and grounded tonight. And you'll recognize at the beginning and end of every meditation, we do some grounding. We come in through the head. We really get down into the feet. That is grounding and that is supposed to anchor us in the physical body. But then we usually sort of travel away and then come back. Tonight we're not going to do the traveling. We're really going to stay in the body and ask for some intuitive guidance from within. And that's something that's important to note. I mentioned last week when we talked about intuition that you can go to your energetic sanctuary for intuition. And of course you can, but you can also get intuition from within yourself. The, the solar plexus chakra, this third one here, is a great place to get. They, that's why they say go with your gut. That's where you get your gut instincts. That's a great place to check in about self-care. So intuition comes from all over and we can access it in the body just as much as we can access it in the spiritual realms. It's just a different type of intuition. And I have not practiced this meditation as usual. It's just an intuitive sort of thing in the moment and I'm practicing it with you. So be gentle with yourself. If emotions come up, they're, just let them come up. That's part of this release process. Emotions are energy in motion is something that um, people like to say sometimes and it's true. So if you feel something bubbling up to the surface, just let it out. And if it you know, sometimes it comes out as laughter. Sometimes it comes out as tears. You might start to get really angry. Sometimes that'll happen. I've had that happen in a yoga class many times before where I'm I'm just like inexplicably really angry. And the teachers will joke about it. They'll say, you know, I know I'm holding you in this pose and you probably want to kill me, but but it's bring, it's moving energy. It's bringing stuff up that that we need to learn to access and release. So now I'm done talking. All right, let's get started with our meditation for tonight. So as usual, get yourself nice and comfortable. If you can sit up with your feet on the ground, that's the best position, or sit on the ground with your bottom right up against the ground. But you wanna have some part of your body contacting the ground, especially for this meditation. Be gentle with yourself, be loving with yourself. Gently close your eyes. Bring your hands to your heart to start tonight, if, if it feels appropriate. And as usual, if I use any imagery that doesn't resonate with you and something else is coming to you, if I, if I say an affirmation and something else comes to you, by all means, use what comes through your own intuition. And let's start as we always do with a nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth and let it out with a nice audible ha sound. <sighs> and again, we're gonna breathe a few more times together tonight. As you breathe in, make sure you take a breath all the way down, let your belly get nice and big. Put your hands on your belly for the next couple breaths and push your hands out with your belly as you breathe in. And continue to do that, breathing in. Leave your hands on your belly and really fill the belly up like you're gonna blow up a balloon. And then sigh it out. So this sighing is already moving some energy through the body we're releasing without even having to pay close attention to what we're releasing. That's the great thing about energy work sometimes is that we can just let it go. So take two more nice deep breaths, really deep down into the belly. And sigh them out. Notice yourself start to feel more settled in the body as you breathe this way. 
you can release that deep ha sound breathing, but continue to breathe deeply either in and out through the nose or in through the nose and out through the mouth. Let it be comfortable. Let it be easy. Don't strain here. If you need to take a nice big deep sigh at any point, feel free to do so. So we're going to start at the base tonight. Usually we start at the head and work our way down. Tonight we're going to start down at the base of our being. I want you to pay attention to your feet. Notice how they feel on whatever surface they're contacting. You can wiggle your toes a little bit. Get them really rooted into the ground. You can use the imagery of standing on a beautiful beach and digging your toes into the sand. You can imagine yourself in a beautiful garden full of flowers or vegetables. Let yourself really ground your feet in that rich, fertile soil. Whatever imagery comes to you here. And then I want you to bring your attention to the base of your spine. This area between your spine and the the sexual organs, the perineum. This is the location of that first chakra. And just let your awareness come to this area of the body. You can imagine some rich, dark energy flowing down your legs and into the earth, through the feet. And then letting that beautiful dark earth energy, that, that fertile soil of creativity flow back up and into the base of the spine. If you're not feeling anything here, that's okay. Just set your intention to be in this part of your body. This is our physical connection to the earth, to our body, to this physical space. So allow yourself to really get settled into the body here and ask your body if it has any messages for you today. Is there anything your body needs you to do? Anything it's calling for? Let that come into your awareness here. And allow the divine love that we've tapped into so many times before through that joy in our waterfall through the top of our head every week invite that divine energy that divine joy that unconditional love to flow directly into this area at the base of the spine let this divine unconditional love come into your physical body Invite it in, release any resistance to this. Let go of any thoughts or feelings that you have that resist this unconditional love and invite it in to the base of the spine here, to your physical body, to your connection to the ground, to this physical space. You are here for a reason at this particular time in the particular location you're in. Let yourself open to that divine service. Let this love flow into your body. Let yourself give gratitude to how hard your body works for you on a daily basis, on a moment by moment basis keeping your heart beating, keeping everything running 
to the best of its ability. Perhaps despite your feelings or treatment of it. Invite yourself to have more love for your body and more respect for what it's calling for here. If you'd like to, you can repeat the following affirmations after me out loud or just in your head. I am fully present in my body. I love and accept my body exactly the way it is right now. I am enough. And as you're ready, gently bring your awareness up from the base of the spine to the lower belly, just below the navel, two to three inches below. This is the side of the second chakra. Let yourself really bring your awareness, set your intention to be in this part of your body. You can place your hands on the belly. You may feel your hands heating up with energy, with this divine love we've called in. Direct that energy, that love toward this lower belly now. Again, releasing any resistance, calling in this divine love, this unconditional love. Checking in here from this space with your emotions. Is there anything your emotional health is calling for? What can you give your emotional body that will make it function in optimal health? How can you love yourself more? How can you love others more? Are there emotions that you're holding on to that it's time to let go of? Let any insights about your emotional being come into your awareness now. Perhaps you've been stuffing an emotion that you weren't even aware was there. Just look, shine a light into this area. Let it be this light of divine love. You can repeat the following affirmations aloud or silently. I am open to the flow of the universe. I allow my emotions to flow with ease. I easily release emotions that no longer serve the highest good. Bring your awareness up to the solar plexus between the navel and the breastbone. You can bring your hands there if you like, it's not necessary. 
but if they're nice and warm, if you're directing this divine love, this flow of energy through the hands, place them gently on the solar plexus and allow the divine love to flow into this area of the body. Notice any tension that you may be holding in this area. Sometimes we hold tension in the belly without even realizing it. Encourage that to gently release. And again, let go of any resistance you have to the love that's flowing into this area. Release any judgments you might be having about your body. Stay in that neutral, loving, divine state. And then check in here with your mental body. Are your thoughts balanced? Are you overthinking? Are you trying to avoid thinking about something? Does your mind have a message for you here from a deeper level, not the ego mind, but the deep intuitive mind that exists within us all? Let yourself tap into this intuition and ask your mind if there's anything it needs from you, if it has any messages for you. And then you can repeat the following affirmations aloud or silently. I think clearly and with divine guidance. I embrace my power for the highest good. I step in to self love. to the heart now, gently placing your hands there if it feels appropriate. This is the seat of our soul of unconditional love in this physical body. Really let this divine love flow into this space. Sometimes we build walls in this area or we clamp our heart shut because we've been hurt. Encourage your heart to open to this divine love that will never hurt you, that will always support you. And ask yourself, ask your intuition, how may I serve unconditional love? How may I serve the divine? And repeat the following affirmations out loud or in your head. Unconditional love is my birthright. I am divine love. Divine love flows through me. Thank you. 
I freely offer unconditional love to the world. And bring your awareness up into the throat. Again, you can place your hands there if it feels appropriate. Direct this unconditional divine love into the throat. Take some nice deep breaths here. We hold so much back in our throat. This is the center of your truth, of divine truth. Ask yourself here, am I using my voice for the highest good? Am I telling the truth to myself and others? What does my voice need from me? How can I step further into truth? And repeat the following affirmations out loud or silently. I speak divine truth for the highest good. I use my voice with love and joy. attention to the third eye just above the brow in the center of the forehead. You can gently place your finger there, maybe rub it or tap it a little bit just to stimulate that center. And then let divine love flow into this area of clear seeing, of clear knowing. Ask yourself, what does your intuition need from you? What intuitive messages would your intuition like to share today? Are there areas of life that you could open to seeing more clearly? Are there things that you've seen that you can let go of? Do you need to change anything about the way you see the world or yourself? today. <sighs> Speak the affirmations out loud or silently. Divine knowing guides my sight. I 
I joyously tap in to my intuitive knowing. I see clearly. And then bring your awareness to the top of your head, the crown chakra, just above the head, the center of the top of the head. This is, a, this is the area that we open the beginning of our meditations and that I encourage you to Close if you wish at the end. Let that center open now. Let divine love flow into the top of the head here. This is our spiritual connection to the realms beyond the physical. This is where we tap into divine connection to divine guidance. This is where we integrate. This is where our balance is achieved. Ask yourself here, what can I do to achieve greater balance in my life? How can I step into the flow of life on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual? Repeat the following affirmations aloud or silently. I am fully integrated with the divine. I am a being of unconditional love. Divine balance is my birthright. I lovingly welcome balance into my life. You can allow this center to remain open or gently allow it to close. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Setting the intention that we're allowing in energy that serves our highest good, the highest good of all. Bring your awareness back through the head and the face, down into the jaw and throat, into the neck. Let it come into the shoulders and the upper arms, into the elbows, and the forearms, the wrists and hands. Allow your awareness to flow down through the top of the chest and top of the back. Back through the abdomen and mid back. into the low belly and low back. Let your awareness come into the hips and the pelvis and then down each thigh and into your knees. Let your awareness travel all the way down through the calves and the shins into the ankles and feet. Once again, feel your connection between your feet and the ground.
Let anything that you'd like to release at this point flow down into the earth with loving intention, with the intention that it be used for the highest good elsewhere. Any energy that we release into the earth, we release with the intention that it will be used for the highest good. Any, any energy we release in any way, we always release with the intention that it will be used for the highest good. And bring the intention of flowing with this divine love, with balance into the days and weeks ahead. Take a few more deep breaths, wiggle your fingers and toes, and move your head around a little bit. As you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Balance is so important in all aspects of our life. And when we tap into this divine flow, we can invite balance in to the physical, to the emotional, to the mental and the spiritual bodies. Living a spiritually integrated life here on this planet involves balance in all of these aspects. So I encourage you to continue calling for balance in your life Continue integrating yourself, the different aspects of yourself, into divine truth. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next week for Wind Down Wednesday. Have a wonderful night and a wonderful rest of your week.